Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. You are not holding back anything that is profitable to us, but freely you release our daily bread and we enjoy it today. Thank you for the spirit of truth that guides us daily. And today, we experience your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's just go on 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Paul speaking here, verse 22, that's where we stopped yesterday. It says, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. See, what's he saying? I told you yesterday. When you, you see, you, we use tongues. Now, it's the gateway. It, 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 you know, you remember, I, was, you know, I told you about um, Peter in the house of Cornelius. He didn't pray for them to speak in other tongues. No, he didn't. Jesus didn't say they should pray for people to speak in tongues. No, but we do it. It's, it's not, nothing wrong with it. But, but I want you to understand because Jesus actually said, this is how you will know those who have believed. So Peter was preaching in Cornelius and suddenly they began to speak in tongues. See? And, and, and Paul one time went, went to Ephesus. And while he was there, he met some people who he thought were believers. See, he, he thought they were believers. And then suddenly, he said, oh, let's pray. And then, oh, Father, we thank you. You know, you know Paul, when Paul said, let's pray, he felt he was in the midst of believers. So Paul just laughed, bro, shenton, kale, prodiga. You know, and then he was just saying, oh, Father, we bless you, Father. We thank you, Father. So Paul was like, I'm, I'm sure he, he waited, maybe they are just revving up, you know. And then he waited, oh, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father. And they're like, hey, 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 hold on. And then he asked them a very important question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Hmm? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -uh. You've not received the Holy Ghost? No. Then he said, hold on. I thought you guys said you were baptized. You see, that's one thing I tell people. You read this thing sometimes, you get confused. You know, you think in the, in the New Testament, when they talk about baptism, you think they are talking about water baptism. No, they were not talking about water baptism. But the word baptism became commonplace. So you, you, even though some disciples were still baptizing people with water, which they shouldn't have actually, because there was no need for that. You see, because they knew that Jesus said they will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. See, not water now. So, so Paul met this guy. So, are you, you know, then they don't ask, are you born again? They ask, have you been baptized? Oh, yes, I have been baptized. Oh, praise God, your brother's there. You know, let's pray. Oh, Labo oh, Father, Father Lord, Father Lord, Father Lord, Father Lord. Father Lord. Father, you, know, you know, some people like, Father Lord, Father Lord, Father Lord, Father. That's all they say. Like, hey, hey, hey. I thought you guys say you're baptized. Yes, we're baptized. Which baptism did you? John's baptism. Oh, ah. <laughs> you know, at this point, they were too used to Holy Ghost baptism that they don't think about John's baptism anymore. But then, when you say baptism, baptism, baptism. So until John was saying, ah, no, 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 no. John truly baptized with water. But he spoke about who's going to come next. See, and when Paul shared the word with them, they believed. And when they believed, they got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And what happened when they got baptized with the Holy Ghost? Paul, the Bible said Paul laid hands on them and they began to speak in other tongues. Praise God. So, so what happened then? Paul knew, oh, these guys have believed. So we, we do this. See, when sometimes you get people born again and you, you lead them. You know, sometimes as a preacher, if you want to give your life to Christ, come out here. And then people come out and then you lead them. Now, why are you leading them to the other room? See, to a separate room, you know. Now, you could have actually done that. that that's, the, that's a major part of the service. But, you know, we've relegated to service is ending, so we have to do this. So now, take them aside and let's continue with the service. That's a major thing. Heaven is rejoicing at that moment. And then you just push it aside. All right, then. So, he said, now, when they go that way, well, why do we tell them to go that way? The truth is, we want to confirm that they have been born again, that they have believed. How are you going to confirm them? You get them together and say, let's pray. And then while you're praying, the ones who have believed, I'm a shy, I'm a shy. Hey. 
So, so, so me that don't speak in tongues, does that mean I don't believe? It's, it's as simple as that. Your problem is your own belief. Hey, but I believe that. What do you believe? What do you believe? Did Jesus lie? No. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. They will speak with tongues. Do you speak with tongues? No. So do you believe? Yes. So Jesus lied? Uh, not, not like that, see? Get out of your own belief and begin to speak in other tongues. Praise God. The Spirit of God is there to give you a chance. All you need to do is to receive Him. I receive the Holy Spirit into my life. So, you know, people say when the Holy Spirit comes to you, you won't feel anything. I don't know. I don't understand that. How can something come into your body and you don't feel anything? Oh, you will feel. You will know. There's a knowing. Something, there's a difference you're going to feel. Yeah. There, you may not feel anything. No, 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 no. That's a big lie. That is a big lie. Now, that doesn't mean everybody will fall under the power and be shaking and jumping and shouting. No. But you will know that something different. I'm different. Isn't the Bible says, if any man being great, he's a new creature. When in, <laughs> you, you know, you know, some teachings that came from a place of unbelief. You must be careful with those things. Praise God. So, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So he says, wherefore tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth them that believe, but prophesying serveth not them that believe not, but for them that believe. You don't teach unbelievers the truth of God's, of God's word. You don't. No, you don't do it. Now, that's part of the confusion the, the church is having today. See? Because they don't know where to draw the line. He just blot out everything. Jesus, in his day, always taught in parables when he was in the public. But, you see, when he goes to his disciples, he unveils the truth to them. And Jesus gave us the reason. He said, the reason is this. Because I don't want these people that are out to catch and understand. Because if they do, you will not see the difference anymore between those who are of God and those who are not of God. Yeah. So, so now we see churches everywhere. Preachers everywhere. On, on, on TV, online, just like we're doing right now. And then what happens? And then an unbeliever listens to us. Every, any intelligent unbeliever listens to you and begins to do what you say. Oh, he said we should do like this. You do like that. And then that doesn't mean the Spirit of God is involved. But as a true believer, there's a way to know. Because the Bible says, test every spirit. You can know. See? But because of that, you, you, don't, you get to church, you don't know who's a believer and who's not a believer anymore. You don't know. But you know, the time of separation is coming. And it's the Lord himself. John said he would thoroughly purge his flow. All right then. He says, thank you Lord Jesus. So he says, teaching is for the believers. Tongues is for the unbelievers. It doesn't mean we speak in tongues to the unbelievers. No, what he's saying is we recognize from the unbelievers. So speaking in tongues when we're in that setting, where tongues is very important, is that's how we know an unbeliever who has become a believer. That's how we know because of what Jesus said. Praise God. Says, verse 23, If therefore the whole church be come together unto one place, and all speak with tongues, and they come in those that are unlearned and unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? Now this is simple. They say, but if all prophesying and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of all. An unbeliever comes in and then he's hearing, he's hearing, you know, just like the disciples on the day of Pentecost. They heard them speak the wonderful works of God. So what was going on? They were speaking in other tongues and then they were receiving interpretation of what they were saying. All right then. He says, And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God, and reports that God is in you of a truth. Because sometimes you are ministering, someone 
walks into the service and you're, you're spelling out everything going on in his heart. He says when he sees that, he will recognize that God is with you. Truly. Oh, I met with God. And that's what he's saying. How is it then, brethren? When ye come together, now I love this. I love this verse 26. We don't practice this in church today. But we should go back to it. Look at it. It says, How is it then, brethren? When ye all, when ye come together, every one of you, every one of you, when you gather in that church meeting, when you gather in that fellowship meeting, it says, every one of you had a psalm. Every one of you. Now, this is the gathering of believers. He said, when believers gather like that, everyone must have something. He said, every one of you have a psalm, had a doctrine, had a tongue, had a revelation, had an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. You want to speak in tongues? Speak it unto edifying. Knowing that when I speak in tongues, I'm going to get the interpretation also to give. When you're teaching, teach unto edifying. When you're prophesying, whatever you're doing, he says, everyone must come with something. So he, he, you, you can see then that when they gathered in the New Testament church, it wasn't to gather and listen to one man and sit down, oh, oh, yes, yes, right on, pastor, right on, pastor. While the pastor is preaching, someone else is getting another interpretation of it. And, 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 and they, they have that. And that's what real fellowship is. I'm sorry to say, most of what we do today is not fellowship, even though we call it fellowship. So what happens then? What happens then? You just went somewhere, listened to someone preach, and you say, okay, amen, amen. You give your offerings, and then you leave. So where's the fellowship then? What came out of your spirit? You should go to church with something. Oh, yes, you should go to church to bless. You should go to church with something. Say, hey, but they don't allow that in our church, so how do we do it? Okay, when you go to church, don't you know you're going to sit beside someone? Bless the person. Pray. How do you do it? Pray before you go for that meeting. Father, I thank you. Because I'm going to church. To, you know, so you know where to. Father, I go. I'm going to, I receive the blessing today in service. In an, Hey, hey, hey. Carry blessing to church. You get into service and you're sitting down. You know, you, just imagine. Just imagine how the Spirit of God can walk. You're preparing for service and you spend time praying and praying and praying. Before you go to church, spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. And you pray and pray and then while you're praying, the Lord speaks to you. He says, take, take, take that tight or take that amount of tight with you when you're going to church. Oh, thank you, Lord. And then you think, oh, that means I'm going to pay my tight in church today. Okay, no problem. And then you go. Or he says, take some money with you. And then you get into church and then you're worshiping God. And then suddenly you hear the Lord say, the person standing by your right, I want you to give him that money you carried. Oh, okay. You look at the person. You don't know the person physically, the person doesn't know you. And then you're just worshiping, Lord, do you really want me to do that? Yes, I want you to do that. Thank you, Lord. I receive it and I will obey you. And he said, hey, brother, sister, how are you doing? You know, while we're worshiping, the Lord just spoke to me. And he said, I should give you something. He said, okay, thank you. And then you're like, this is it. Thank you. He said, no, you don't have to go to the pastor and say, pastor, God, why would God say I should give somebody something? You just give it quietly. Everybody's closing their eyes and worshiping. Someone is getting blessed. And, and the person looks at it and that's the money the person was believing God for coming for that sin. Now this is how church service ought to be. Praise God. Yes! Now you tell me that person leaves that service thinking, is God real or not? No! Hey, Nabaska, brother, Keshada. This is what service ought to be. This is fellowship. You know, some people say, eh, if that church, that church, can they call for the poor people and can they be doing something for all the people that don't have money in the church? The church should have helps department. That is, I don't know, I don't know where we get all these ideas from. You are the help. Do what is right. And no one is going to lack in church. Don't look for the pastor. Say, but, but the pastor is giving, is the, we are giving all our offerings and, and tithes to the, to the pastor. Now. They should use it to help members of the church. Who sent you to give your tithes to the pastor? Who? Uh, so you are not doing your job. And you think the pastor should do your job for you. And you're lazy to hear the voice of God. To do what is right. And then you blame the pastor. 
You are the cause of that people being poor. You are the cause. Why? Because you will not take time to listen to the voice of God and obey him where those people are concerned. You don't do that. I've got to stop here. Praise God. Well, yeah, that's the way forward. Do what is right. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.